My name is Perry Evans. I'm the Director of Interim Management for Life Sciences with Veridus. I have over 25 years experience across all forms of recruitment, including an international base. Life Sciences is really covers many sectors, but specifically we're talking about uh, pharmaceuticals, biotechnology, medical devices, agrochemicals, consumer and contract research and contract manufacturing organisations. So in terms of an overview of the market, um, there's no doubt that in the last century the biopharmaceutical industry has had a major impact in eradicating um, debilitating diseases such as polio and smallpox. There are however still large areas of unmet medical need. In the developing world we're talking about cost effective access to basic care whereas in the developed world we're looking at mainly chronic diseases so heart problems um, and other sort of serious illnesses such as cancer. Within that the whole industry itself is going through a great period of transformation there are huge economic and operational challenges facing the sector at this moment in time. There's an ever-increasing ageing population and there's emerging economies all the time and that is creating greater consumer demand and the requirement for better medical provision. There are many key trends that are affecting the industry at the moment. The blockbuster drug has been the mainstay of the pharmaceutical industry for many years. So products such as Lipitor and Crest, Crestor, which treat high cholesterol and serotide, for example, with asthma and COPD. Um, there tends to be now more of a move away from those blockbuster drugs, which are generating sales in excess of a billion dollars per annum, to the more niche-oriented products called personalised medicines. The whole industry is coming under great scrutiny. Um, both from an operational and a research capability. And, and one example of this is the US Federal Drug Administration and the European uh, Medicines Evaluation Agency are putting stricter controls from a regulatory point of view, which actually means that the whole industry is now having to build a strategic plan whereby compliance is much more part of the way that they do business. Research and development is coming under great pressure because we need to find lost revenue streams when products come off patent. So there is a greater emphasis on the desire and need for productivity in R&D to be successful to replace those lost revenues. As an add-on to that, pricing plays a really important part. There are many sort of pricing constraints that are affecting the drugs that are already launched. The rise in generic medicines is playing a factor and of course the budget constraints of governments are causing extra pressure on pricing. So the trend really what we're looking at is which way do these companies go? Are they going to go for the innovation model or are they going to go for a more commercial model? With the innovation model it's, it's quite clear that companies are looking at new and emerging markets where the, it's a more cost effective way of innovating rather than the traditional markets that they may be operated in. And I believe that science development is the real key to where this industry is going to go in the future. There's some great initiatives happening at the moment. If you look at things as like stem cells, there's um, biomarkers, pharmacogenetics, and um, in biology, synthetic biology, biology, they are all testing the boundaries of traditional drug and vaccine development. There are a number of changes within the life sciences industry that are affecting the type of roles that are in demand at the moment. Particular um, areas are within the commercial and the medical affairs arena. Both those departments play a really key part of the corporate plan and corporate structure. So we're talking about roles such as sales and marketing from a commercial point of view, but also regulatory affairs, medical information, pharmacovigilance and uh, clinical research are all key to ensuring that both you protect brand awareness and increase it and also you're protecting the revenue streams. However, there are, in my opinion, still huge gaps amongst um, organisations in terms of skills. There are a number of people possibly in the wrong role and with headcount freezes since the last recession, there is often a, a way to go that they put extra burden for want of a better word, on existing personnel. But I've been really encouraged within life sciences in the fact that they've actually embraced the notion of putting in experienced 
highly valued interim managers for a defined period that can actually um, add value to the company, be it project-based or looking at ways of innovation, however that might be. So I think the future looks really good from that point of view. Um, and obviously Veritas are, are well placed to actually um, you know, present the clients with the, the right skill set for both from an interim management and an executive search point of view. And in fact, Veritas are the only executive search firm nationally that have got the um, investors in diversity accreditation kite mark. The challenges um, that are most prevalent at the moment really are, are both from an operational and a strategic point of view. Um, life sciences, quite often there's lots of mergers and acquisitions that are going on, so they need people, possibly with outside expertise, that can help them both get into new markets and look at sort of the acquisition of, of other companies, biotechs, whatever that might be. And of course, as I alluded to earlier, regulatory is a really key factor. You know, companies are now being scrutinised more from a compliance point of view, so there is a greater need for both the regulatory point of view and pharmacovigilance, the drug safety, to, to check both you know, the efficacy and safety of products that are going out there um, to the patient communities.